Hello students. Today we'll be learning the lesson air. Air is one of the natural resources and our earth is surrounded by a layer of air called the atmosphere. So let us all do a small activity where we breathe in through our nose deeply and breathe out. So this air that we breathe in is a mixture of many gases. However, for our respiration, we need one of these gases called as oxygen. You may know that we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. In this lesson, we'll be learning more about air, such as we'll, we will learn about the existence of air through experiments, we will know about the different components of air. We will understand some characteristics of air through experiments and we'll understand about the uses of air. Finally, we'll discuss about air pollution, causes and effects and remedies for air pollution. Let's start the first activity. So air is not visible, but its presence can be felt. How can we know that there is air in our surroundings? Let's write three experiences about it. So think about this one time when you switch on a fan and you stand under it. So you can feel the air that is blowing from the fan onto you. So this can be our first experience. That is when we switch on the fan and we feel the air that is coming from it. Our next experience can be something like sitting in the window seat of a moving vehicle. When you sit in the window seat, you can feel the wind that is blowing on your face. Now, I want you to think about a third experience where you can feel the air. If you want more time to think about it, you can pause the video and then restart it once you have the answer. I already told you that air is a mixture of different types of gases. Now let's learn about the different components of air. Firstly, air is majorly made up of nitrogen, which is 78% in air. The next component, the next major component of air is oxygen. We know that we need oxygen to breathe. We also know that we breathe out carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide component of the air is much lesser than oxygen and it's only 0.04%. Finally, we have the other components of air which include water vapor, noble gases and dust particles. They make up 0.96% of air. When you look at this chart, we can see that nitrogen is the biggest component of air because you can see here that nitrogen is a cream in color and it's occupying the major component of the chart. Next, we have oxygen, which is 21%. Next, we have water vapor and noble gases, which make up 0.96%. Finally, we have carbon dioxide, which is the smallest part as we can see here in purple that is 0.04%. Now that we know about the different components of air, we can answer these questions below. Firstly, which gas is the major component of air? The answer for that is nitrogen. As we can see here, it's the biggest component of air. The second question is, what percentage of gas required for our respiration is present in air? So we need to know which gas is required for our respiration. So like you all know, the gas that we need for respiration is oxygen. Now let's see what percent of oxygen is present in air. We can see here that oxygen is 21%. So the answer for the second question is 21%. Now the third question asks, what is the normal percent of carbon dioxide in air? 
So we can see from the figures that they have provided here that carbon dioxide is 0.04%. So we can also see in the diagram that carbon dioxide is 0.04%. So the answer for the third question is 0.04%. Now they have asked us which is the least component present in air. From this chart, we can see that purple is the smallest of all the different colors. It is occupying the least amount of area. So that means that carbon dioxide, which numerical value is 0.04, is less than the other numerical values. Hence, carbon dioxide is the least component present in air. A small quiz, which is the major component of air? Your options are nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide. If you need to think, you can pause this video. The correct answer is nitrogen. Nitrogen is the major component of air. Nitrogen occupies 78% of air. Now let's move on to the next topic. We have an experiment over here where they want to show us that even when something seems empty, air is still occupying it. So what they want us to do is they want us to take a glass and put some dry parchment or dry paper into the inside of the glass. Next, when we invert the glass and press it carefully into a container that is filled with water, you can feel the air pushing your hand upwards and also when you take out the glass, you can see that the paper is still dry. So if the glass was empty, then the paper would have been wet because the water would have touched it. However, they want us to see that air is occupying that space and that is why water does not touch the paper, hence it's still dry. You can also repeat the same experiment with a bucket full of water and a mug. When you try to overturn the mug and push it into the bucket, you can feel a force that is pushing you back. So that is because air is occupying the empty space between the water surface and the surface of your mug. Okay. Now let us look into this activity. We need to match the diagrams on the left side to the property of air that is listed on the right side. So the first diagram is a balloon being inflated. We know that balloons are very small before we blow air into them. Then they become very big and light. So what is it that is going inside and occupying space there? The correct answer is air. So once we blow air into it, the balloon becomes bigger. So the property that is shown in this diagram is air occupies space. Now let us look into the second diagram. Here we have a stick and two inflated balloons are tied to each side. The stick is now straight. Once you deflate or once you burst one of the balloons, the one side becomes heavier and the lighter side goes up. So the property that this is depicting is that air has weight. Because air has weight, the burst balloon becomes lighter and the heavier balloon is the one which still has air in it. Now let's look at the third diagram. Here, they are trying to light a gas by blowing air on it. So this is the property which says that air helps things burn. That is why when you blow on a stove or on anything burning through a pipe, it helps the ignition process. So this process, this property is air helps things burn. Let us move on to the next part of the lesson. Before we do, we just want to know that moving air is called as wind and wind has enormous energy. We will learn more about the use of wind energy in the unit Amazing Energy. Now let us look at these incidents. Roofs of houses are carried away by strong winds. 
You might have seen in television or in some videos about how when the winds are very strong, they carry away roofs of houses or even trees, right? And sometimes when we ourselves are walking on the street, we feel that very strong winds might push us a little. And clothes that are hung out to dry will flutter when the wind blows. Also, when there is a puncture in one of the tires of the vehicle, the vehicle cannot move. We can see, like I said, that trees like coconut trees swing in strong winds. And if you have ever played with kites before, you can feel the wind that is lifting up the kite into the air. So we can understand that air is a very important resource that we need in our daily lives. As you can see in the images that are shown here, the first one shows the harmful pollutants that are being released from an industry or from a factory. The next one shows an automobile or a car that is releasing harmful substances into the air. Next, we have burning of wood, burning of garbage, burning of tires. All of them are releasing harmful pollutants which are very harmful to man and even other organisms. So this is defined as air pollution. The formal definition is mixing chemicals, dust, microorganisms which are harmful to man and other organisms into air is called air pollution. Air gets polluted when chemicals and microparticles of smoke from industries and vehicles mix up with it. It causes serious health issues like heart disease, cancer, breathing problems, etc. It also has a negative impact on the growth of plants and their yield. Some animal races may go extinct. Some organisms need, sorry, since all organisms need air, it is necessary to prevent air pollution. So we must take measures to stop air pollution. So in this part of the lesson, we will be learning that air pollution is what happens when there is mixing up of chemicals, dust or microorganisms which are harmful into air. So air gets polluted if these chemicals and harmful substances release from the smoke of industries or vehicles mix up with it. So we might have all heard during Deepavali season, a lot of people tell us not to burst crackers because this will cause a lot of pollution. This pollution can have negative impact like heart disease, cancer and even breathing problems. If air is very polluted, agriculture is also going to be affected and negative impact is going to happen on the growth of plants. Some animal races may even go extinct. So when an animal race goes extinct, it means that it is completely wiped out from existence. Since all organisms need air, it is our responsibility to prevent air pollution. Now, let us learn about what we can do to prevent air pollution. The first activity is write any two measures to prevent air pollution. Like I mentioned, one thing we can do is stop the bursting of crackers. This will help the prevention of air pollution. Now let us think about the second thing that we can do to prevent air pollution. Firstly, we can always choose to avoid the use of automobiles and instead use cycles or other clean vehicles for our transportation purposes. So the next thing we can do is use of clean vehicles such as cycles for our transportation. Now let us look into some other pre uh, prevention mechanisms that we can take to prevent air pollution. Some of the measures to, fall, to be followed to prevent air pollution are firstly, 
preventing the mixing up of chemical waste discharged by factories with air. Before the factories release the chemical waste, they need to be filtered so as to make them less pollutant. Installing tall chimneys in factories so that smoke can be released in higher attitudes, altitudes. Using gaseous fuel instead of coal, diesel, petrol. Designing emission control systems. Using public transport. By use of public transport, instead of all of us taking our individual vehicles, we can make sure that there is a carpooling system going on where instead of too many vehicles, only one vehicle is traveling. Using alternative energy sources like solar energy, hydroelectric power and wind power. These energies are known as clean and green energy sources and they can be used as alternatives instead of burning fuels. So we also need to avoid burning of substances such as tires and other garbage like we saw in the images. Here they want us to identify the right and wrong ones keeping in view the concept of air pollution and write the reasons. So in the first image we can see that there is a bike that is emitting a lot of smoke. Do you think this is right or wrong? The correct answer is this is wrong because it is causing air pollution from the smoke that is being emitted. Now let us look at the second diagram. Here we can see that instead of using vehicles, they are cycling. So we have learned that cycling is a form of clean and green energy. So this is the right thing to do for preventing air pollution. Now let us look at the third picture. The third picture shows garbage being burned in the open. So we have learned that burning of garbage releases a lot of harmful chemicals into the atmosphere. So this is wrong and does cause air pollution. The fourth diagram is depicting garbage collection process that is happening and garbage disposal is taking place in the correct manner. There is no disposal of garbage into open areas or burning of garbage. So this is right. The fifth image shows a public transportation system that is electric trains. So we have learned that using public transport is one of the approaches we can use to prevent air pollution. Use of electric trains is also recommended because it does not cause air pollution. So image 5 is the right thing to do. However, when you can see in image 6, this is a coal train which uses coal as a fuel. We can see that burning of coal results in the release of a lot of smoke. So this is not correct because it causes air pollution. Okay students, so this is the end of chapter air.